Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about First Peter. First Peter has a famous uh, passage in it, chapter three, verse fifteen. And if you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. But you must do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak evil against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Jesus. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good if that is what God wants than to suffer for doing right. This is the famous ap apologetics passage, you know, why we do apologetics, why to always be ready to give an answer to our faith, to explain to people we need, what is the reason for our faith or what is that faith? The faith in the gospel of our Lord Jesus, the faith in the good news that he died for us on the cross ra and raised up for us and ever pleads in heaven for us, so forgive our sins. And that's why we defend the faith. Even in in the book of Jude, the Christian faith has to be defended because throughout the millennia, ever since the apostolic faith, apostolic age, people have gone, have like Jude says, worm their way into the church and cast dispersions among our faith you know they don't have to tell you blatant truth but they can just just as satan did in the garden of eden when satan said to eve oh come on eve look at this fruit surely god did not say you will die no you will not die but you will be like god you see it's the same all right look it can be wrong you've been made with the proclivities, desires, surely God means you to, to express them. So little half-truths here and there, they worm their way into your mind and, and you look at it and say, hmm, yeah, maybe. And like Eve, we fall and we are we are again seduced by Satan. Satan has, is, has no new ideas, but we too get, you know, fall every time too. And in the beginning of 1 Peter, Peter said, I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the land of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, the province of Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father chose you long ago and the Spirit may, has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Jesus Christ and are cleansed by his blood. So we see here in a little sentence, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and our Lord Jesus Christ. What is that? That is the Godhead. Albeit the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the concept of Trinity, of Godhead being three in one and one in three, is sprinkled throughout Scripture, throughout the Bible, and we see it very clearly here in what Peter is saying to the church. And I I know that, you know, I've read many, I have friends on Facebook, you know, who every time we face a, a catastrophe, we said, Jesus, come soon, come end the world now, you know, that destroy all the wicked. But I, I don't know what is with this preoccupation with the end times. Our end will come sooner than the end of the world. Let's, let's be very clear about it. And Jesus also said, look at the harvest. Look at how huge and plentiful the harvest is. But the laborers are few. But yet we are saying, come soon, Jesus. The solution is Jesus. He will come and destroy everything and bring in the new heavens and the new earth. But what about these people who have yet to hear the gospel? And that's what Peter is saying, to give, to be ready to explain your Christian hope. What is it to be an apologetic? And we are all called to be that. We are all called to be laborers in the field of the harvest, which is plentiful. Jesus said, pray 
to the God of the harvest that he will send more laborers. So until we are counted as a labor in this field, we cannot say Jesus come soon and the world now. I mean, that's, that's a very selfish thing to do. What about the people who haven't heard? All those billions out there, they're really, how will they believe unless they hear? St. Paul also said. And how will they hear unless someone goes to them and tells them? Blessed are those the feet of those who goes to tell them. So we we must not be surprised that calamities will come, that we we will not always be sitting down peaceful and healthy, but things will change and will come at us. Even as Daniel prayed, Daniel's friends prayed and prayed the night before, but yet in the morning, as the furnace had been cranked up seven times hotter, they had to go in there. So that don't be surprised that even as you pray, you will have to walk through the shadow of the valley of death. But the promise to us is he will be there with us. And even as the three friends of Daniel went into the furnace, they saw a fourth man. Jesus was with them in the furnace. And even as Daniel was thrown into the den of hungry lions, the Lord Jesus closed the mouths of the lions. So the next morning, Nebuchadnezzar said, Daniel, are you still alive? He said, yes, I'm here. I said, oh, thank God. So Jesus also said, the world will hate you because they hated me first. So don't be surprised as we go through hard times as some, some preacher said, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Oh, That's why we read scriptures to remind us of the promises of our Lord Jesus to be with us throughout, especially when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And even now, I don't know if anyone has caught the virus or not, and even now I'm going through my second day of self-isolation, yet I know we need the time now, you know, as people are, are sad and afraid that during this time when they are away from work, there's no paycheck coming in. How are they going to meet the financial obligations? I know that we, as with everybody, whether we believe in God or not, are going through tough times, very anxious times. But remember scriptures that somehow during a famine that the ravens brought Elisha food every day to feed him and the widow and his son and her son until the famine was over. Somehow divine providence will be there. And we just have to, to be on our knees to pray, pray for wisdom and courage for our world leaders to take care of this problem and, and, and find a solution to this pandemic and that if we are ever affected, that God will find a solution for us to get through it. Trust, trust in the Almighty, really and truly. There's nothing we can say or do at this moment. And wash your hands.